Grade 7 math number 12.3a, calculate experimental probability of compound events. We can use experimental probability to approximate the probability of an event. We can figure out the chances that an event will happen. We compare how many times the event happened to how many times we tried to make it happen. A compound event, that's our new word, it's an event that includes two or more simple events. Remember from the last video, a simple event would be flipping a coin to get heads? Well, a compound event can include events that depend on each other or are independent of each other. We know they're independent if the occurrence of one doesn't affect the probability of the other, like flipping a coin and rolling dice. So let's say we were going to flip a coin and roll one die, okay? If we flip a coin, we're going to get heads or tails. If we roll one die, we're going to get a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 6. If we combine them to get a compound event, we would have heads with one or tails with one. A heads that has a 2 or a tails that has a 2. See, we're combining them. Heads that has a 3 or tails that has a 3 or 4 or 5 or 6. So it means that there's 12 possible outcomes. See? And if we did this 30 times, we could use tally marks to record our results on a table to find which compound event had the greatest or least experimental probability. You could try that, because that's something that you would have around the house that you could try. Try flipping a coin to see if it's heads or tails. And if you have one die, that's, you know, two is dice, one is a die, then you could do this, okay? The experimental probability of an event can be found using recorded data. If we have a choice of chocolate, strawberry, or vanilla ice cream in a choice of a cup or a cone, well, we could log what the customers ordered. If 18 people ordered chocolate ice cream in a cone, 17, uh, 8 ordered strawberry in a cone, and 6 ordered vanilla in a cone, 5 ordered the chocolate in a cup, two ordered the strawberry in a cup and one ordered vanilla in the cup, then we would know that there's 40 or orders, because there's 31 here and nine here, and we could figure out what is the experimental probability that the next order will be strawberry in a cone. We'd be able to answer that, okay? So the first thing we're gonna do is find the total number of trials or of orders, okay? So we knew there were 40 orders because we added them all up, right? We find the number of orders that are strawberry in a cone. Well, that was eight. We find the experimental probability. Remember, that's the number of times it occurred over the number of times it tried to occur, okay? The trials. So that's eight over 40. There were 40 orders and eight were strawberry in a cone. So the probability of strawberry in a cone is eight over 40. So that is the probability that the next order is going to be strawberry in a cone. Now, we can convert this into fractions, decimals, and percentages, like we did in the last video, right? What does 40 need to become 100? It needs to be multiplied by 2 and a half. So we multiply the numerator 8 by 2 and a half, and that's 20 over 100, or 2 tenths. We could write it as 2 tenths, or 20 hundredths, or 20 percent. So there's a 20 percent chance that the next order is going to be strawberry in a cone, or one-fifth, right? Because this could even be one-fifth, right? Because that could be reduced a little more. I almost missed that. All right, so the flavor and container are completely independent of each other, aren't they? It doesn't matter if it's in a cup or a cone. It's the person's preference. And it could either one could be picked, right? Now, here's a good question. Why would the owner of an ice cream parlor care about this outcome? What would be the big deal to the owner of an ice cream parlor? Do you think he would want to know that there's a 20% chance that that's going to be his next order? Well, yeah, because he'll know how much strawberry ice cream to order from the company and how many cups or cones to order, right? And if he knows that there's this many chocolate, he knows to order more chocolate than vanilla, right? So he might get, this is... 6 and 18, that's 1 to 3, isn't it, the ratio? So if he got three containers of chocolate and one container of vanilla, 
that would be the right ratio to order, wouldn't it? So it's kind of important to the owner of a store. So if you're thinking about having your own business, you want to know this, okay? A lot of people say, what does math got to do with anything in the real world? Oh, it's everything in the real world, especially if you want to make money. All right, so the percentages make it easier to see the probability is high or low, okay? So are the chances extremely high that it's going to be strawberry in a cone? No, but it's a one out of five chance. It's enough of a chance that he better have strawberry and he better have cones, right? Okay, that is how you calculate experimental probability of compound events, and that's what compound events are. In our next video, we're going to talk about using a simulation to make a prediction. You remember what a simulation is, right? We talked about it in the last video. It's the model of an experiment that would be too difficult to actually do, like testing the Mars rover, okay? When they tested the Mars rover, they simulated what it was like to be on Mars with the sand and the rocks to see if the wheels could drive over it, okay? Okay, again, I hope this was helpful. I hope you're doing really well, and I hope you understand all this. And I hope you're getting good grades on your tests from this. So keep trying, and I'll see you next video. Bye.